Today we're going to show you a really good soup that's been around for many generations. Now this is an amazing, super delicious, easy to make soup that warms you from the inside out. This soup packs a lot of great flavor and it's super healthy for you. That's a big bonus. Not only all of that, we make it because we love to eat it all year long. It doesn't even have to be cold. What soup am I talking about? This soup is called caldo de pollo or Mexican chicken soup. And it's made with parts of the chicken. Now we like to use mainly the leg quarters, which is the thighs and the drumstick because it's the brown meat. The brown meat packs a lot more flavor and a little bit of fat which makes everything taste better. The white meat can be used, but you need to cook it a little shorter time frame because it will become dry. Go, so there ain't no right way, ain't no wrong way, like I always say. Different people use different vegetables depending on where they're at or what region they're from or what their grandma taught them growing up. Use what you prefer, but today we're making our traditional caldo de pollo the way we make it in my house, the way my grandmother taught my mother, and the way my mother has showed me. What we're using today is the leg quarters off of a whole chicken, corn on the cob, we have some zucchini, two carrots, one whole celery stalk, one whole onion, three small potatoes. I think I'll throw another potato or two in there because I love potatoes in my chicken soup. And one whole jalapeno that's gonna go into the pot and about a quarter of a small cabbage. Three garlic cloves. Part of the magic of the chicken soup is having plenty of garlic in there. We're also going to add two teaspoons of cumin and a tablespoon of salt, pepper, garlic, which is our OG rub. This is about a five and a half pound whole chicken. We're not gonna use the whole bird. It's not an exact weight that goes into the chicken pot. So that's the way I split my birds, quick and easy. Cut out the backbone along with that little tip of the neck because that adds a lot of flavor. I'm gonna cut this leg quarter out just like this. It's not hard to do, it's really easy, folks. This is the other leg quarter, so we're gonna cut this piece out here. And so I'm gonna cut the drumstick off first. We're gonna cut this into two pieces. Now this is the whole chicken thigh. We don't want the whole skin, although that adds a little bit of flavor. I'm gonna cut this in half as well. Cut this in half. And we're gonna cut this off right here and cut this one in half. We're gonna take all these chicken pieces, put them inside of our soup pot here. Even the backbone and the neck bone, there we go. Now I have some homemade chicken stock here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole thing in there. A little bit of chicken fat up here. I'm gonna leave that in there, it's all flavor, folks. <laughs> We're gonna add some more water and get it onto the stove and start a little simmer going here. It's been about 15, 20 minutes uh, on high. As soon as it starts to boil here in about five or six more minutes, we're gonna turn it down to a slow simmer. Okay, my friend, the chicken just started to boil. We brought down the temperature, so it's gonna be just a light simmer. We're gonna go ahead and add our seasonings. It's gonna be two teaspoons of uh, cumin. It's gonna be about a half a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. So I didn't fill the whole teaspoon here, it's about a half. And it's going to be one tablespoon of salt, pepper, garlic. That's what this OG is, it's pure salt, pepper, garlic. No additives, no fillers, no free flow agents, just perfect, delicious salt, pepper, and garlic. We have four garlic cloves. We're gonna add the onions, the carrots, the celery, and the cabbage, because the carrot and the celery and the onions take longer to cook. Cabbage doesn't take quite that long, but I like to put it in there early anyway. It really flavors the broth really well, number one. Number two, it kind of disintegrates in there, so it really just flavors up the broth really so good. We're gonna slow simmer this for 45 minutes, and then we're gonna come and add the corn and the potatoes and the zucchini, and we'll be ready to eat about 30 minutes after that. All right, here we go. We're ready for, for it to start simmering again. We're in business, folks. Yeah. It's actually been an hour and 10 minutes. I wanted my carrots to get soft and I was at a slower simmer. So just always remember that there are no exact times. You know, every pot's different. Some carrots are softer than others. Some potatoes cook quicker than others. I have several chicken parts in there. I wanted to make sure the bone would cook through all the way because that adds a little bit of flavor. The chicken has to reach a completely cooked point where the flavor comes out of the chicken and into the broth. I like to check as I go and do a little tasting like you saw, saw me doing right now. Once that carrot gets nice and soft like that, you're definitely done. So at this point, it's been an hour and about 10, 15 minutes. 
It's time to add the corn, the squash, the potatoes. All of these get done in about 15 minutes. We're gonna give it about 20 because the water temperature is gonna come down for a little bit. I'm gonna turn up the heat, get it back up to a boil one more time. And we're gonna let it ride about another 20, 25 minutes from there, maybe 30, just kinda depends on how I read the potatoes. Once those are done, we're ready to eat some delicious caldo de pollo. I did notice the flavor's good there. I can taste the chicken now where it's really getting a good flavor. It needs a little more salt. Remember, I always say salt is to preference, but I am gonna put another tablespoon of OG in there. Now, you don't necessarily have to do it exactly the way I do. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can always add salt in your bowls. All right, let's see. That potato ready? Oh yeah. Just cuts right apart. When the potatoes are done, it's all done. Let's eat some caldo, baby. Cooey. I got it full to the rim. Probably should have got a bigger bowl because this stuff is really delicious and I know I'm gonna go for a second bowl here in a little while. With caldo de pollo, we already have a lot of good delicious veggies in there. We got a nice big corn. I like to take my corn out of the bowl, make a little room. I usually like to take some of my mama's million dollar rice and put some of that in there. Now you don't have to put the rice in there, but I like to do it. And of course, you know, we're in South Texas. You gotta have that little squeeze of lime. And I mentioned earlier we were gonna put a jalapeno in there, but actually the jalapeno was for the bowls. Anyway, I chopped up the jalapeno. I'm gonna drop that here in the bowl. I'm gonna give it a little stir with all the stuff in there. Look at that chicken. It didn't fall apart, but it should be right there on that edge where very easy to come apart. And once again, we like to use thighs because they have a little bit more fat and it doesn't dry out. You can cook thighs way past cooked, which is 160, 165, and they're still not gonna dry out. Whereas if you're using chicken breast, you can only cook it for a little while. If you overcook it, it's gonna dry out and just basically disintegrate. All right, this caldo looks fantastic. All right, let's give it a taste, honey bunny. All right, a little bit of rice in there. A little jalapeno. Ooh, baby, that's good. Mm, mm, mm. A little piece of chicken. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Man, I love potatoes. I don't care how you cook them. Give me potatoes any day of the week, three times a day. I like potatoes. Oh, man, that's good, honey. I love carrots, too. Carrots are really good for you. But I like the way they taste, they're fantastic. Folks, I'm telling you, this is an amazing little dish that you can make at home, especially as the weather gets cool. It's an awesome comfort food. And I said at the beginning, this warms you up from the inside out. Everything in this dish is good for you. And that's why a lot of people will make it for their family or their friends when they're sick or they have a flu or a cold. Mm. <sighs> it's so good. I guarantee you folks, this will make you dance, yeah, it'll make you dance. It's that good, it's that good. That's good stuff. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get some value out of it. I hope you try this dish. I promise if you do, you're going to really love it. So if you want to get some of the APC Wild Seasoning, you can go to pitmaster.us. You can also find the salt, pepper, garlic OG rub at pitmaster.us. If you want to up your barbecue game, go to pitmasterclass.us. Remember to like, comment, and share. Tell your friends and your family about Arnie Tech and subscribe so you don't miss any videos from Arnie Tech. Keep the smoke light, make it work, and boom! Wow! Boom, boom, wow! Just kidding. <laughs> All right, friends, I'm gonna take a bite of my corn, so we'll see you guys at the next video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. That's some good corn, baby. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole thing in there. A little bit of chicken fat up here. I'm gonna leave that in there. It's all flavor, folks. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right. I didn't realize it was kind of semi-frozen. <laughs> it looks great. I like to get a little bit of that broth first. A couple of potatoes, a little corn. Oh, wow, wow, it's hot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>